fixing to move into a whole new realm um, of things. So one of the things, uh, how many of you want to see the 232 tariffs pull up and get rid of those aluminum and steel tariffs? Yeah, it's kind of mixed, whatever, they're in here. Well, and then you got the 301s, you get all this kind of stuff. The one thing that I'm going to talk to you about is, as far as, in, from my opinion now, and understand this, I'm dumb as a box of rocks, so I have to look and break things down into more common sense terms. I'm going to give you some facts that I've looked at. I'm hoping that it will be uh, well received here, because when we talk about it, I do not believe that U.S. goods are treated fairly abroad. Now, I'm talking U.S. manufactured goods. With that, how easy is it to take a U.S. manufactured item, we'll say vehicle, and send it to India? I did that. Yeah, yeah there's some, like, and in, importing a U.S. manufactured vehicle into India or Japan. And how about Germany? Please. A little easier. Well, that's some of the things that I'm looking at, but yes. If you take any of their vehicles and you bring them into the U.S., yeah, there's some bureaucracy, there's no question. But by far, it is much easier, is it not? So let's, let's talk about it a little bit. As far as the, I gotta put on my, I'm, I'll tell you what, getting old sucks eggs, doesn't it? <laughs> so, I'm gonna put this back in here for a minute. Okay, so. Uh, as far as uh, the, the first uh, slide here, I was talking about, if you're looking and following on the, uh, on the app, it's just talking about the amount of trade. The amount of trade is even just five years has grown significantly. I mean, we're talking billions and billions goes in there, but the last couple of years have been kind of uh, staggering in the overall things. Uh, exports are beginning to show some improvement, but in 2022, we had one volume, one uh, level of uh, of trade, and then 23 actually there was a depression, if you want to, or recession, whatever you want to call it, in the uh, in the uh, international logistics and, and trade and, and whatnot. So volumes actually dropped uh, during that time frame. Um, but in overall trade in 22, we had seven trillion dollars in total trade, imports and exports added together. 6.9 trillion in 23, and now it's so uh, it's estimated to be 7.2 trillion here in 24. Now that could have been some factors in there. You remember the Panama Canal with the drought that impeded um, frequencies of ships. The uh, threat of uh, by the longshoremen on the western region that had uh, an impact on how quickly some of the supplies or almond goods, uh, goods and different products came through. So in looking at it overall though, as far as the trade, we have the trade deficit. I'm gonna jump forward here because as far as uh, there's a bar graph, and this goes easier if it was projected, but it's uh, you know, 3.9 trillion is what we're in, uh, importing versus three trillion in uh, 2022. 3.8 trillion drops on imports down to, uh, and, and 3 trillion again on exports. Our exports, don't, it just seems to be 3 trillion. We can't seem to go any higher, or any lower. Gets a little bit better maybe and, and all of that. All right, but talking about trade deficits, regardless if we have a great year or, or a bad year economically, our trade deficit seems to be it sucks wind. I'll just tell you. What does a trade deficit mean? Trade deficit means we're importing more than we export. Now, imports are not bad, but I'll say this. I don't want to sacrifice getting cheap imports at the expense of U.S. exports. What do I mean by that? U.S. exports, we still have to compete on the global market Price, quality, cycle times, um, you know, obviously customer service as far as things go out there and all of that, just like everybody else does. Everybody seems to want to have access to the U.S. market. But when we turn around and want to reciprocate, 
there seems to be either tariffs on our goods or non-tariff trade barriers. And that's what I want to get into. So with the deficit, trade deficit that is, um, here's one thing. Who do you think leads the effort? Uh, which country do we have the largest trade deficit with? I'm not sure everybody's about to shout it at the same time, but what? China. Good point. <laughs> the one thing that I will say, our trade uh, deficit right now is $785 billion. That means we're importing $780 billion more than we're exporting. Okay. China accounts for 23% of that one country. 23%. But do you want to know if yes, the 301 tariffs and I will quite frankly say I think the Uyghur um, Forced Labor Prevention Act probably has an effect on it. What do you think that their, uh, their account of the trade deficit was in 2016? Now, if you cheat, you're going to look at the, short, uh, the, 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 uh, the presentation. 47%. So as far as what I'm getting at is that there was a focus on this. And what? why would we use additional tariffs on somebody? You're trying, the objective is to use that as a tool to try and change the behavior of a country. Right? And hopefully, or you have know, to influence them. Stop using slave labor. That's what it boils down to, Right? Well, the other thing is, is also talking about fair trades. Um, when I say free trade, everybody wants free trade. Well, the general assumption is if you say free trade, oh, it's duty free. Yeah. Well, that's an aspect of it. I mean, but it's also having free access to the market. How many of you know about the World Trade Organization, WTO? All right, with the WTO, the concept is to be a member of the WTO, you're supposed to be opening up your markets, looking at reducing tariffs, but also opening your markets to other countries. I forget the year, but I know both China and Russia were added to the WTO. How many of you believe Russia has, now I know there's a problem with the war with Russia, I'm not, but a while back, how many of them do you believe that Russia had an open market? Not really. That was an extremely difficult country to get into. But same thing with China. How many of you believe that China has opened up their market? And yet they're a member of the WTO. They're supposed to be open. It's not just a U.S. thing. This is all countries. China's playing hardball with everybody. And you know what? They're China first. Okay. But as we're dealing with that, that's something to give some thought to. Here's my objective as I'm going through this. I'm not trying to convince you that we should or should not be taking action regarding a certain country or certain policies or anything like that. What I'm hoping to do is stimulate your thought so that when it comes to your strategic development of your regulatory and industry affairs and government affairs, that you're going to look at things holistically. I come back to the aluminum and steel tariffs. That's a big deal in the automotive industry. And it would make things a lot easier if we didn't have to worry about that. However, instead of just focusing on that specifically, if we looked at the situation holistically and see if we can influence stimulating trade for U.S. companies in this particular case, both ways, you would have a greater shot at getting those tariffs removed on the aluminum and steel. Where I'm going is agriculture or fashion industry or whatever else has nothing to do necessarily directly with your industry, but that's where I'm going. So that's what my objective is, is to get you to thinking about this. So talking about the trade deficit again, um, Mexico now is at accounts for 12.8% up from 8.9% in the trade deficit in 2016. What does that mean? Well, gee, our trade with China actually has been reduced. 
we were doing about $600 billion in trade, total trade with China um, in 2016. We're at 300 and it looks like 369 billion. So people are moving away from China as far as total trade and things of that nature, but they're going to other places. So let's pick it up. Again, still, I don't want to come across to say imports are bad, and a trade deficit necessarily doesn't mean it's totally bad, because I'm going to get to the size of our economy in a minute. But it has to come into play here and look at it. But here's one of the other things. Vietnam now has come out of nowhere, and they're at 8.5% of the trade deficit. Now, their economy is not even in the top 15. And yet there are, what, number of one, two, three, third, uh, third largest in the uh, deficit, not counting the European Union as a whole. Germany, their trade deficit accounts for 7.1%. Uh, it actually has shrunk since 2016. They used to be 8%. Well, all this trade deficit, all I'm getting at is getting you to think about it. So... Talk about economies. How big is the U.S. economy? 47, 32. 27 million. So U.S. economy, 27 trillion. 27 trillion. He's right on the, you must have looked. No. <laughs> 27 trillion. It is. That's, that's, that's the value. We're the largest economy in the world. China's the second largest. What do you think they are? 20. Queen, any other guesses? They are 17, uh, basically 18 trillion. Okay. So the U.S. 27, China's about 18. Who's the third and fourth largest economies in the world? Just take a guess. You can. Japan and Germany? Germany? Yeah, you're right. Japan and Germany. So... Their economies are four point four in Germany and four point two trillion. So stop and think about that. Twenty seven trillion. And the third four point four trillion. So I mean the US and China dwarf the economies of everybody else. Everybody wants access to the largest economy in the world. That's us. Great. Is it not fair to think that we should also be asking for those uh, act full access to the second largest economy in the world? It's things of that, that's where I'm going with this, okay? Now, how many of you are probably familiar with this, but uh, if you were to take a U.S. manufactured vehicle, could be actually a Japan, Japanese vehicle or any other country, and send it to Germany, what would be the duty rate, duty and tax rate for that vehicle? 10%. 10%? And after that, something about 30? About 30? Yeah, I was talking duties and taxes with that. So 30%, that's pretty valid. What if we took a Mercedes and brought it in here? What's the duty rate on a Mercedes? But I didn't see I didn't. Two and a half. What about a pickup truck? Uh, Joe. <laughs> with the seats or Tip for tat here. <laughs> but, I mean, in, in all seriousness, even with all that, that's uh, where we're looking at this. All right, so 2.5%. So let's just say it's 5%. By the time you add all the ancillary other stuff that you have to put into it. 30%, 5%. 25% for that. And 25% for the bigger. But the point being is when you're looking at it as you're trying to deal with that, is it fair? I mean, part of the higher rates come from initially, after World War II, Germany was setting those rates high. Why? Because they were trying to, to rebuild their domestic economy, and they were trying to protect it. Last time I checked, I think Germany has recovered from World War II, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> All I'm getting at, folks, is we talk. We need to talk through this kind of stuff. Talking about energy, you talk about you know the automotive. You're talking about fashion and things of that nature. Here's the other thing, though: the total amount of 
uh, exports by country. Who do you think, just in general, they can export anywhere in the world? Who totals the list of exporting from their country? Germany. Germany's one. China. China. China is the first one. In total dollars now, we're not talking percentage. We're talking total dollars. They are 3.7 trillion is what they export. U.S. is next in total dollars of 3.17 trillion. And then Germany is 2.2 trillion. Now get, remember the size of the economies? Germany was 4.4 trillion in total economy. And they're exporting 2.2 trillion. So now this is where we can do apples to apples comparison. The percent of their economy tied to exports. <coughs> Excuse me. The percent. The average, the average, and get this, folks, is 31% of all the economies. 31% of a, a, an economy is tied to exports. But here's what really gets me. The U.S. of the top 15, we export 11.6% of, of our totals. Okay? But then China, they're at 20%, almost 21%. Um, Mexico, their economy is tied to 40, 43% of their uh, economy is tied to exports. But the kicker to me was Germany at 50%. Now, in 2016, Germany's economy was exporting at 38%. They still led the uh, highest as far as uh, exports to their economy. But that's astronomical, folks. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's good. But what does that mean? Half of their economy comes from other people's money and goes back to their country. So that's where it comes into. Now, let's get into... China, if we were going to deal with this trade deficit to try and balance that out a little bit, um, the top uh, commodities, electronic, this is from China. This is what we're importing in. Electronic, uh, electronic equipment, if I can see. Did, did, did it. Sorry. Machinery, furniture, toys, plastics, things of that nature. Going to China, they're, at, they're buying aircraft and spacecraft parts, vehicles, oil sea, machinery, electronic equipment, medical tech, things of that nature. Part of the thing on this, though, is what to do and what would we uh, look at. The forced uh, labor prevention, obviously that's still kicking in. Intellectual property rights, you don't hear that too much anymore because of the forced labor, but that is, you know, you design something, you go over there, and you have them manufacture it. And within a few years, there's knockoffs. Is that fair? No. Gee, wait a minute. They're a member of what? WTO. Part of the World Trade Organization is to help protect all that. They are, they're a member, but even the WTO is not holding them accountable, as well as some other countries. So we spent all this time trying to regulate talk and talk, 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 talk. Somebody needs to go with a boot up to somebody's backside and go, wait a minute, right? But that's just one of the things to look at to figure out what should we do. All right, the others, Mexico. Um, we're importing vehicles, electronic equipment, machinery, medical equipment, things of that nature. What do we sell to Mexico? Machinery, electronic equipment, minerals and fuels, um, Vehicles, things of that nature. As far as dealing with a strategy, give this advice. And, you know, development of the USMCA uh, trade agreement. Well, it's time for renewal on some of that. Maybe we need to fine tune some of that. Again, the whole thing too is remember North American content. And you know this. I'm I'm preaching the choir on this one. The North American content has supposed to go on up to seventy five percent. Have I got that right? It went from 60 to 75, I believe. Why is it that we can't say to hit that mark? It would stimulate business in Canada, U.S., and Mexico, and in all three countries. That was the whole idea behind that. And yet, they, somebody's cutting corners this way or that way or whatever. 
And of course, the other side is I was talking to somebody, uh, back it was Alberto, I think it was you, but we were talking earlier where if somebody sets everything up and qualifies for the USMCA, and next thing you know, somebody then sources, well, I can get this part cheaper from you know China, Malaysia, Vietnam, whatever, and they bring it in, and all of a sudden, the percent content drops. Here's my point with that conversation. It no longer qualifies. It has negative repercussions, but the purchasing sourcing guy is looked at it and go, hey, I got bigger, better, faster, cheaper. I've saved a few pennies off of this one part. You just cost us 50% more. Look at things holistically. That's all I'm getting at here. The trade. Over 33 million jobs, probably even more than that, but here's what it boils down to. For every billion dollars in trade, equates to 10,000 jobs, okay? So remember the percent of our economy tied to exports was 11%. The average of all the top economies is 31%. If we even doubled, that'd be 22%. Let's say we just went to 20% of our economy would um, be tied to um, exports, then the number of jobs would be in the millions probably. The, uh, well, I've got here is, uh, on 21% would create about 9.9 .9 million or more jobs, over 10 million jobs probably. Now, is that realistic? Probably not. Going back to our economy, our economy is so massive. 27 trillion. We could be completely self sufficient if we wanted to, but we're not going to because we want cheaper products and things of that nature. That's fine. We consume so much in the US, but I can also tell you we could do so much more if we just all we're asking for is what? A level playing field. There are things that you go into certain countries and all of a sudden there's a new regulation or whatever. How many of you enjoy exporting to Brazil? <laughs> I mean, they change the, their stuff like, you know, uh, it's a raffle. It's like, here, oh, here's, we're going to hit, hit this uh, new regulation and off it comes. Um, I'll just also say that we had the 301 tariffs that came in under Trump. We had the 232s that were added uh, and, and uh, accelerated under Trump. People are trying to figure out what's going on. The whole intent, I think, was to try and get some of these folks to the table to try and negotiate something. Whether you were for Trump or not, doesn't matter. The one thing I will say, the Trump era, most compliance people nowadays are at the table at the senior levels. So whether you like them or not, or whether you agree with them or not, the agenda is you're at the table. So here's your takeaway. We know what happened in his, the four years that Trump was president. Now he's coming back. You think it's going to get busy? I think it's like you, you, you better strap it down because it's fixing to take off. The exciting thing about that is, in my opinion, regardless of our, we're going to put tariffs on everything. You know, as far as it, that's a, that's a negotiation boy. That's saber rattling. We don't need to react. We need to respond. And the question is, with your own company and these trade associations and AIAG especially here, what is your top regulatory affairs agenda? If you want to see some of the the tariffs or the uh, the the two thirty twos or any of that kind of stuff removed, we need to look at this holistically and maybe align with other industry groups to try and stimulate trade to say, hey, I want fair trade in Brazil or Japan or Germany or China or whoever else. So we can, you know, we got to compete with them. They may still have a cheaper product, but we have our, the American product. I know some of our American products are very popular in some of the other countries, just like some of the others are in here. It's just one of those things is just looking at it from a standpoint Let's just play fair. And that's all I'm trying to put forward. So with that, I may be dumb as a box of rocks. I just hope that that is just a common sense way of doing it. I'm like a, 
well, the, the country boy uh, economist here or whatever for right now. Send the sheet. So with that, I'll uh, leave it with you. Thank you.